Okay, lesson two is going to pick up where we left off, and that is, again, talking about volume versus temperature. And we wanted you to see a molecular view because that's a big deal in AP Chem. And so if you look at these balloons, they each contain the same number of particles. Um, and this is going to be an example of heat them up, speed them up, which you'll hear me say a lot. Um, basically, you know what happens as the molecules warm. Um, they get hotter and they speed up, which gives them more kinetic energy, so they move faster, and then they collide with the walls of their container with more energy, and in this case, the walls of the container can expand, and so they, uh, because they are made out of latex or rubber, whichever your balloon's made out of, and they allow that to be able to expand or contract. Um, we did that in Chem 1. We did a little gas laws inquiry unit, and we stuck our balloons in hot and boiling water, if you remember that, and we saw that they get smaller or they get larger if they get cooler or hotter. Okay, so that's just a visual representation. And so we're going to now go into Gay-Lussac's law, which relates pressure and temperature. And, of course, that is going to be in Kelvin for your temperature. And, of course, they are directly proportional because everything is directly proportional except for pressure and volume. Same concept. Looks a lot like the uh, Charles's Law, except we're using pressure instead of temperature. So let's jump right in. Are we working a problem here? Nope. We're going to talk about Avogadro's Law next. And in Avogadro's Law, uh, we are going to be relating volume and moles of gas. As the gas increases, the amount of gas increases, it makes sense that the volume would increase. So again, it's going to be directly proportional. You guessed it. Okay? So here is Avogadro's Law. Uh, you might want to write that in your notes. It is uh, V1N2 equals V2N1. Looks a lot like the other two, Charles and Gay-Lussac, we're just substituting, uh, in this case, uh, moles for temperature, okay? So that is going to take us to the combined gas law. And the combined gas law, of course, is relating those three things. You can always, if you need to, you can throw the moles in there right here on the bottom within, uh, added with the temperature. We typically don't show it in there, but it is in there. We just don't usually do anything with that. Um, and then, of course, this is truly the only law of the three uh, basic gas laws that you would need to uh, memorize. It is not, uh, i got to go look. I'm, I can't remember, actually, if it's on the um, reference material. Um, but it's a good law to know, especially when you're checking your parameters and how they're changing. Um, all of these, of course, I've shown you before in Chem 1, are the same if, if temperature is constant. So if I hold temp constant, then I'm left with P1, V1, which is boils, right? And then let's say volume is constant, and then I would take volume out, and I have P1, T2 is equal to P2, T1, and of course that is uh, Gay-Lussac. And then if I hold pressure constant, then I'm left with V1, T2 and that, whoops, T1, and that is, uh, of course, Charles. So that's how that works, okay? All right, so let's do an exercise with Avogadro's Law real quick. Um, remember that is going to be V1 in 2 is equal to V2 in 1, and then um, we have a 12.2 liter container, so that's going to be V1, uh, 0.5 moles of oxygen, that's going to be N1, and then we have a pressure of one atmosphere and temperature of 25 degrees. Um, if all of the O2 were converted, converted to ozone at the same temperature and pressure, so we don't need uh, any of that, what would the volume? So we're going to be solving for V2. But we, so we have N1, we don't have N2 at the moment, but we can get to it because it's telling us what's happening. It's saying that O2 is being converted to ozone, which is O3. So there is our reaction, so we just need to balance that. So we're going to put a 3 here and a 2 there. So now that we have N1 is 0 .0, that's, excuse me, that would have made a big difference, 0.5 moles. Just add in an extra O in there, that's not good. So that's moles of oxygen 
right? And the good old mole ratio, three moles of oxygen will produce two moles of ozone. And of course that comes out to 0.33 moles of O3, which is our N2. So V2 is going to be equal to, again, what happened to our volume? It went down, so we expect our moles to also go down. All right, so let's see if that happens. So V1, N2, over N1. And so we have 12.2 liters, 0.33 moles, over 0.5 moles. All of that is in two, well, that's two significant figures. And so that's what we want our answer in two, so 8.1 liters. So that is how we would do Avogadro's law, okay? And that's also how we would do it if, hey, they didn't give us a second uh, moles, but they gave us a balanced equation. So we can always use the magical mole ratio. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's going to bring us to the meat, the most important part of the unit, the ideal gas law, which is lovingly called pivnert, pervdert, whatever. People call it different things. But basically, it is um, the key to easy points on the AP exam. Okay? So we take Boyle's law, Charles's law, and Avogadro's law, throw them in a blender, blah, blah, blah. This shows you how, if you're interested in the math, you can see how uh, it they derive it, but basically we just need to know how to use it, pivnert. All right, so here's what we need to talk about. Um, when we are using this, we are going to use this R value right here uh, on the stoichiometry test. I noticed that several of you used a different R value, and it is technically an R value, but it had joules in it, and we use that when we want energy. So we need to use this particular one. There are several you can do an R value with uh, different pressures. Okay, hold on, pause. Okay, sorry about the interruption. Here we go. So this is the R value that I want you to use. Uh, you, if you use one of the other ones, you have to make sure that you're in the right uh, unit. So it's just easier to always use 0.08206. And then you know you need liters, atmospheres, and of course, no matter what gas law constant you're using, you always need your temperature in Kelvin. Um, sometimes you're going to see it written like this, this bottom part right here, and basically that just means those are supposed to be on the bottom. It's, I don't know why they do it that way, I guess to confuse kids everywhere, but the negative ones mean they're just supposed to be on the bottom. And you will see that a lot throughout AP, so let's get used to looking at that and not be confused by the units to a negative one. Um, of course, these are only useful at low pressures and high temperatures, and when I say they are guaranteed points on the AP exam, I mean they are guaranteed points. So, let's work some problems. Here we go. Um, exercise 8, we have a sample of hydrogen gas. We got 8.56 liters. As soon as we see a temperature, what do we do? We say that is 273K and then a pressure of 1.5 atmosphere. How very lovely. They left everything in the units that we need. So we are going to be solving for moles. So we take that PV equals NRT. We solve for moles, so it's going to be PV over RT. So plug everything in 1.5 atmosphere, 8.56 liters divided by the 0 0.08206. Sometimes you'll see people use 0 0.0821. I'm very guilty of doing that. Um, and honestly, it doesn't make a huge difference in your calculations. Uh, but it, I think the uh, paper lists it at 21, I mean 206, 80206. So plug and chug, put it in your calculator, and you should get 0.57 moles of H2. Okay, um, now let's look at another one. So we're reading this one. Which gas law would we use here? Well, let's see what we have. We have a volume. We have a pressure. The gas is compressed to a new volume, V2, at a constant temperature. 
It says use the ideal gas law to calculate the final pressure. I don't know why it says that, because no, we're not going to do that. Uh, we are going to use Boyle's law, because that's easier. So P1V1 equals P2V2. So plug everything in, solving for a new pressure, uh, 3.5 liters, 1.68 atmosphere, divided by 1.35 liters. And so 4.4 atmosphere is our answer. Okay. And then we're going to work one more, and then I would like you to work then the last two on that particular stop, and then the next uh, video will be over gas stoichiometry. So one more, and we're done with this lesson. Um, this says a sample of methane gas uh, has a volume of 3.8 liters, 5 degrees Celsius, and it's heated to 86. So here's the deal. As soon as you see a, a gas problem, and it has two parameters, or, uh, sorry, I said that backwards, has one parameter with two values, it's being changed. So if a value is being changed and they want you to find the new value or what it's, what's affecting it, it's going to be one of the basic gas laws. And so we would revert back to the combined gas law and then leave out what we need. Uh, I mean, leave out what we don't need. That was backwards. And so... I saw that temperature change, so I'm not going to be using the ideal gas law here. I'm going to be using a form of the combined gas law. And it says constant pressure, so I'm going to say I don't need you, and I'm going to take out pressure. So now I'm going to use this form, which, by the way, is Charles's law. And so the 5 degrees Celsius is 278K, and the 86 is 359K. And, of course, T2, T1. So now I'm going to solve for V2 and plug that in. Okay, 3.8 liters, 359 Kelvin, and then that's going to be 278 Kelvin on the bottom. Again, we increased pressure, um, excuse me, sorry, we increased temperature, so we expect volume to also increase. And indeed it does, 4.9 liters. Okay, so that means exercise 11 and 12, work on your own. That's going to be the end of this video lesson, and we will pick up with gas stoichiometry, which is going to be incredibly important to us.